Hello, my lovely soul, and welcome to Unstoppable Confidence. I am your host, Lauren Glick. I am here to bring you my energy, my motivational speaking, and me being a confidence mentor. My mission is to inspire women to own who they are, step into their higher selves fearlessly, and live a life with unstoppable joy. On this show, we are going to cover everything from aligning your life to your higher self, setting boundaries, self-growth, and living a purpose-driven life. Let's get you living a meaningful life you cannot wait to wake up to. Stop driving and start living with ease and abundance. Cheers to living a magical life. And I am so grateful to be on this journey with you. Now, let's head into today's episode. Hello, my lovely soul. So if you are new here, I am Lauren Glick. I absolutely love getting on to unstoppable confidence and inspiring and empowering you to move forward through your fears into the life that I know that you completely deserve. And I think that's a good introduction. And if you are on YouTube right now, you will definitely see me sitting in my closet. <laughs> I, it's so interesting because I'm usually like, woo, 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 all over the place, a million hands, every direction. And to really focus, I like to get into small areas. So I literally can't be sitting at my desk and be looking out the window, at my golden retrievers barking at the horses that are walking by all the great things. Um, and in my closet, I can't do that. <laughs> it's like, shit, I get to sit here and I get a really focus. Um, no, I've never been tested for, all, you know, all the crazy things that everyone's tested for. But I do know as an entrepreneur, I've really had to focus in on my strengths and weaknesses. And one of my weaknesses is definitely like focusing in on one task. And because of that, um, really focusing in on my positive traits and those ones that I get to work on. Um, I'm sure you as an entrepreneur have really been doing deep dives on your personality as well, because if we don't understand personality, then, or the people that we're working with, I think it's really challenging to be an entrepreneur because we get to hire those people that our shortcomings are. And if we don't know what we're really good at, then how are you supposed to hire out for those people that you don't know, like that are not, um, that you need that extra help in, right? Anyways, today is going to be a mini-sode and we are going to be talking about anxiety, anxiety relief, and it has everything to do with the, what exactly what I was just talking about with um, me having like a million hands in every direction. You as an entrepreneur, I'm sure you feel the same way of, oh my gosh, holy moly. I have so many things to do, but I feel like I have to do them all at the same time. And if I'm doing one thing, I feel like I'm lacking in the other episode or the other task that I really need to get done by Friday. So I have really learned, especially in the past couple months of how to stop the worry and just focus because that focus thing was for me on one small task was extremely hard. So there are a number of things that I absolutely would love to bring to you. There's actually four of them. So I'm going to get into it, girl, because I think that they are very powerful. And if anyone can be an entrepreneur and really focus and drive in on one aspect. um, So these things definitely did help me. And if they helped me, I'm sure they as hell, they could, they could definitely help you. Okay. So the first tip that I have for you, if you've ever heard of the vagus nerve, right? It's the one that drops you out of the parasympathetic mode into your sympathetic mode. So right, you're in that fight mode and it literally drops you down to 
that sympathetic, really relaxed state. So that vagus nerve actually is that nerve that we are going to be triggering when we do this um, little um, response to get you into that more relaxed state. So if you want to see me actually hanging out in my closet, um, stimulating my vagus nerve, you could totally go onto YouTube at the Lauren Glick and actually watch me do it. So it's not so complicated as I'm just walking you through it in voice. So all you're going to do is interlock your fingers to the webbing. <laughs> I used to be a yoga teacher. <laughs> so my voice should be very easy to explain because I am pretty good at demonstrating through the voice, especially being in clubhouse. So interlock your fingers to the webbing. All you're going to do is take your the palms of your hands and put them at the base of your neck. So your thumb should be pointing down your spine. I want your, your fingers, so your pinkies should be touching like the base of your skull. So when your skull and your neck meet, I want you to really be pressing in there pretty firmly. Take your, uh, hopefully you're not driving when you're doing this, but I want you to take your elbows and really span them out to their size. So your elbows should be pointing like 90 degrees. So you kind of look like a T, right? Um, and bringing your neck back. So you're pressing your neck into your hands and your hands into your neck. So from there, all you're going to do, your eyes are wide open, but you're going to take your eyes down and to the left. And you know you hit your vagus response when you take a deep breath, inhale, or you yawn. And really trying to move your eyes down and to the left. It might take up to a minute. So coming back to center, mine's usually an inhale. I've only had that um, extra. I've only had the actual yawn a couple times. Usually I just have a big exhale. So now you're gonna go to the right. You're gonna take your, your eyes down into the right, really just taking your eyesight down into the right. And when you have a big exhale or a yawn, you should feel a lot more relaxed. And boy, I haven't done that in a while. So that felt really good. And I'm in a little bit more of a relaxed state. On Mondays, I have kind of changed up my schedule. Usually people have Mondays, as I say, usually. The entrepreneurs that I have mentors as, they have Mondays as their CEO days where they're really doing a lot of outsourcing, talking to their teams. On Mondays, what I do is I have my blog writing day. So I take that blog, I turn it into, um, into what do I turn my blog into? <laughs> I'm sorry. My God, I'm such in a relaxed state. Maybe this was a bad time to record my podcast, but I take my blog, I change it into LinkedIn posts. I put it onto Twitter. Um, I write an email. I put pin pins up on Pinterest to have those funnels coming through. And then also I usually record podcasts on Monday. Um, so I am in a very mellow mood anyways. So really stimulating my vagus nerve right now. I'm like, boy, I feel good. Um, cause it's interesting, right? You can have one email that comes through and it could put you right back into the anxiety state. And I definitely did get an email that I was like, holy shit, you're going to get anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I did. So right before this recording, um, you know, I'm always full transparent with you. Um, definitely had a little bit of an anxiety state before I recorded this. So this was a good reminder for me that I definitely do have four things that I can do to make sure that I am not in that anxiety state. And I think that's really important. Yeah. Anxiety is good because it gets you moving, but at the same time, if it's causing you so much stress and that cortisol level in your body is increasing dramatically, that is also not good. Right? So that one thing is stimulating your vagus nerve. That is huge, huge, huge. If you only have like a minute or two, definitely. You can do that every hour. I remember when I first got out of fire, that was the thing that I was definitely doing every hour 
because your body regulates to whatever state you're in. And mine was definitely in that emergency state of you're always on call. Um, so definitely not on that anymore. Well, you know, we're always, we're always moving in the right direction. Well, I'm learning to move in the right direction. So the vagus nerve response, number one, that is the thing that I always try to recall and go to at first. The second thing that I always make sure, and this would be because the vagus nerve response, you could either use it for pre preventative care, or you could use it for the aftercare, right? Oh, and for me, that second thing that I absolutely make sure that I do every day is movement. If I'm not moving my body, all that extra energy is stored within me. And you know that your body is a temple, so you get to move it. Um, and movement really just gets, um, the happy, what is the happy, happy, uh, hormones in your body. God, I'm so relaxed right now. <laughs> the happy hormones in your body. Nobody cares the name of those. You're probably listening to me being like, Lauren, you are so crazy today. I'm like, yeah, totally. So get out moving, get those happy genes going. And that is the second way that I absolutely am like, it's a must because it's preventative care. When I get out and move my body, it relieves a lot of anxiety. If I have anxiety, I always make sure, girl, you need to go out and move. And it was really challenging for me when I was having my autoimmune flare-ups. For those of you that are new, if you're new here, I definitely sometimes um, talk about my autoimmune um, ish. I don't like to call it a disease or disorder. I'm like, who is like, we don't want to focus in on that. The things that we get to focus in on are those things that we're going to. Um, so I have a uh, rheumatoid arthritis. We'll just start with that one. Right. So that was really preventing me from moving. And it was also a huge anxiety thing for me. Cause it was like, okay, the only way that I used to know how to relieve my anxiety was movement, was really pushing myself into workouts. So it was really interesting for me the past year or two to really understand anxiety and how to prevent it, how to get rid of it. Um, when I wasn't able to move, that was really challenging. So if you're in that state right now of holy moly, maybe I have a broken ankle, maybe I, you know, I have a sprain, something rather, and you can't move. There are definitely different ways that you can combat that anxiety and that vagus nerve response. That first thing that we did talk about, that is one way that I absolutely love to, um, combat the anxiety for sure. So if movement isn't really that plausible for you right now, um, the vagus nerve get on that girl. Um, get over to my YouTube channel. So you could actually see me in my closet <laughs> and do that response, right? So you have the vagus nerve response. You definitely have movement. We should all be moving because it's good for our health as well. The third thing that I love, love, love to do is meditation. Now you might be like, Oh, I can't do that sitting and, and sitting there for five to 10 minutes, like in silence. Um, I learned meditation in yoga. I didn't even know that I was learning meditation when I was practicing yoga. I started um, yoga before I was a firefighter. So it was about 15 years ago. Um, and I didn't know that when they were telling me, oh, being mindful, like let's, let's stop thinking about everything. Let's move. If you have a thought, pretend like it's a cloud and have that cloud just disappear and just like float away. You know, don't get upset about that cloud of that thought process. Just be mindful of it, notice it and let it go. Um, I'm like, have, I'm making fun of it, but at the same time, it's totally true. Um, so that's how I learned meditation was through yoga. And I didn't also realize another way to meditate is to be creative and to get in a process of creating artwork. So I also do love oil painting, um, pottery and jewelry making. So those three are ways that I do love to get rid of my anxiety or make sure that I'm being very mindful when I'm done creating. I I'm just like, Holy moly, where did the time go? And why do I feel like 
I'm super mellow and chill right now because you don't realize how in depth you're really focusing in on things. I have very meticulous, um, very finite lines. So it's very challenging for me to think of anything else other than the lines that I am creating because of the fact it, I have to really make sure that my lines are very smooth. So what is one way that you, gosh, have always thought about creating, like what is one art form that you are or medium that you've always thought like, boy, that sounds like a lot of fun. So I throw pottery and you're probably like, what do you mean throw pottery? And I'm like, so what do you throw it against the wall? So wheel throwing, when you see, and everyone's always like, oh my God, you're like ghost the movie. Yeah, I guess you could say I'm like ghost. Um, wheel throwing is that potter's wheel where we get to create forms such as plates, bowls, mugs, all the great things. Um, if that's something that's interests you, there's definitely classes that you could go in and use wheels and understand clay. And there's hand building classes where you get to just make bowls and everything under the sun with just your hands with no wheel. Um, have you ever thought about jewelry making? It gets you out of the like crazy day-to-day -day things and it just gets you in the state of, okay, I get to create something and how am I going to do that? Or it just really focuses you on the drawings that you are doing of, okay, this line, like if you are doing a life drawing, if you're drawing something in real life and you want to make it look real, um, what you will be doing is being so focused in on that task at hand. Like you literally can't really focus on more than what you are drawing or at least me. And that's why I really do lean in onto my creativity and my education behind me in the fine arts um, because I absolutely love it. And it does help my mindset. So what kind of creativity have, or art forms have you really thought of? I mean, there was like paper mache. There are so many crazy things that people are doing on TikTok. Like um, they're making, I don't even know what they are, but they're making like forms for and people. A lot of people make soap. So there's so many different things and I'm not trying to put another task on your plate, but I'm also saying that being mindful and being creative is who we are. And when we are in that moment of creativity, you really get sucked into the time and right? Like I, it takes me about an hour to actually, <laughs> actually getting out of the, Oh God, I got to do this. Oh God, I got to do that. Oh God, I got to do this. So it takes me quite a while, right? I always set us aside three hours of the creative process because I know it's always going to take me an hour to get into that flow of painting or pottery. So, um, I highly recommend to kind of maybe look up at for junior colleges around you to see what classes you could just go into, because if you go into a class, our classes are always three hours, um, unless you're doing like a winter course or something. Why am I telling you about that? But okay. Three hours, 100%. If you go into a class, uh, it really forces you to focus on something other than entrepreneurship because us as humans we are nature and i that's why i love pottery because you're getting so close to clay and to nature itself and then you're doing the firing process and then you're turning these glazes that are just dust and you're changing them into like this glassy material it's crazy it's crazy, boo. If you want to get into pottery, let me know. DM me. Sometimes I do post on my stories about me. This was supposed to be a mini soda. Now I'm talking about pottery. God, Lawrence, ADHD, like whatever this is, brain, come on. Uh, maybe I need to go to Susan Mar. It's interesting. I was going to go um, do some underglazes on my pottery, but I was like, Lauren, do a podcast episode. And I'm really glad I did. So the fourth thing that I absolutely love um, to help me with my anxiety. So if I am just like on a, on a road, right. And I'm like, holy shit, like this is just not, nothing's helping. Um, I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely love CBD. I don't know how you're feeling about like, maybe it's California. People have told us that we're like going rogue um, because everything's 
legal over here in the cannabis industry, but I absolutely love CBD. At first I was like, I don't get it. Like I tried it, but, um, gosh, it's definitely one that has helped me a lot. And if you are the one that your thoughts are always going a million miles per minute, 100%, You need to get some CBD. Um, My dear friend, Kelsey has a phenomenal company called Sweat CBD. I do have a promo code that will give you 10% off. And that code is Lauren10. It is some CBD that tastes almost like coconut. If you've tried CBD before, it usually tastes really gross and tastes like cannabis. This stuff has a very coconutty base, but not like crazy, right? It's just like a coconut oil. So it has a very small hint of like, what is that? Or like a cacao taste. I don't know. It's very smooth. It doesn't have that crazy cannabis taste. So it doesn't have THC in it. Um, And it literally just helps me focus. So sometimes before my runs where I'm like, I just want to focus on running. Cause I'm like, usually off into millions of different thoughts of like, Oh, I could do this. Oh, I could do that. It's like, how many times do I have to be like, there's so many great ideas, but sometimes you need a break. So highly recommend if you've tried the vagus nerve response, if you've tried movement, if you've tried meditation, CBD might be that extra little oomph that you need. Please DM me. Feel free to ask me any questions because I have been using it for almost two years now. The first year I was like, it doesn't really do anything for me, but I think I was just, um, yeah, taking it wrong. So if that's something that interests you, feel free, jump on over to my Instagram at the Lauren Glick and ask me about, um, CBD and what, how it really affects, um, the crazy million miles a minute brain. Um, so on that, I, hopefully this really helped you because I know that within the energy of the world right now or the universe, um, there is a lot of anxiety. I know people are getting back to getting into person and people and are having really hard times with like engaging with people and like being nice. It's just like, every time I go outside, I'm like, boy, why is everyone in such a bad move? I want to go back into my closet. (laughs) And that's the reality of why I'm in my closet. Oh my God. This was the greatest episode ever. How many times did I tell you I was sitting in my closet? So on that, you literally do have to go over to my YouTube. I'm going to put that link into the show notes. Also, I'm going to put into the link into my show notes of sweat CBD that is already pre-linked to Lauren 10. So if you click the link, it will already have my promo code attached to it. But if it's not for any crazy reason, because you know, technology, all you have to do is put that promo code into your checkout for your 10% off. It's definitely something, especially around the holiday times, you know, um, I I think it's something that you might really get some benefit from, um, on that, you know, I love you. I love you. I love you. If you have any questions, if you would love, I would absolutely love if you tagged me in your stories and told your audience about what you're getting from listening to unstoppable confidence. I absolutely love coming here, empowering women, giving them my tips and tricks from fire of how I gained my confidence, all the things that I'm learning through entrepreneurship. Um, and if you want to be on this podcast as a guest, every other week, I definitely do have a guest um, entrepreneur on here. And if you haven't listened to some in the past, you have to. There are some complete fire women in fire women. Um, women on fire or to know that doesn't sound good either. <laughs> I'm done. I love you all. Hopefully you are having a fabulous, fabulous day. Go tag me in your stories. Snapshot this screen on your phone. Put it in your stories on Instagram. Tag me. Tell your audience what you loved about this episode because that would mean the world to me. I am here for you and your audience. So I absolutely love you, girl. And um, I will talk to you on the next episode. Bye. I hope you are so excited about where you're going because I know I'm excited for you. Thank you so much for listening in today. 
If you loved this episode, it would mean the world to me if you shared it with a girlfriend or posted it on social media. Tag me so I could personally say thank you. I am so grateful. And until next time, 